My name is Magdalena König. My name is Tobias Truniger. And this is Living the Classical Life. I'm Jolt Bognar, host of Living the Classical Life, and we're glad you're joining us. Today we speak with Magdalena König and Tobias Truniger in the Rheingold Lounge of the Munich State Opera as we discuss what it takes to prepare a young singer for a life on stage. I hope you enjoy. Tobias and Maggie, thank you so much for being here on the show. It's a delight to welcome you here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So I'm particularly excited about this conversation because on the show we're concerned with talking about what it means to be a musician these days, what it means to be connected with the musical life. And we are particularly concerned with the world of opera, what it takes to be involved with training musicians, what it takes to put on a production and sell it to the community. There's so much to be considered there in a changing world that might even regard opera as an art form to be an antiquated uh, method of, of communication. I wanted to begin the conversation by talking about the significance of where we are speaking right now. This is the Rheingold Lounge, the, mm -hmm. the Munich uh, State Theater. Wasn't Das Rheingold in fact premiered here in 1869 and, and subsequently many other operas of Strauss, uh, even as far back as Mozart and, and Wagner. I mean, this is a really amazing place and you get to work here on a daily basis. What does that feel like? I have to say, I don't know how Maggie thinks, but I have to say it's not every day that I think about, ooh, I can work in a place where Idomeneo was premiered or, or whatever. But I, I think there is a certain spirit in it, but not just in the opera house, I really think in the whole city. Mm -hmm. And um, that is something I, I really got very, very clear when I came here 11 years ago, that people, the society, the, the Munich people are really interested in opera. They are really feel very connected to their opera house or houses. There are other, um, also other ones here in, in Munich, but they really have a very strong connection. And speaking of, of the people, I think from the outside, the Munich people um, who come here almost every evening, there are people who come here in the standing um, seats and just be here every, every day. And you can feel with all the people working here, everybody has his or her own connection to the house. Like what Toby said, the traditions. And if you talk to the people behind the stage or um, like in the front house or whoever, artists, they all feel this community, I think. And that's how we work because we have to bring such a big live performance on stage every evening. And we are working together as a very big big team or it's like a very big ship, I think. So it sounds like the statement that I opened with that the the art form might be antiquated. It sounds like that's actually a very different relationship from the art to the, the community here because there is a direct connection with where it was created. The composers were here. Um, what do you feel like when, when people might even say, you know, what's happening with opera? Is it is that something of the past? 
um, we have, in fact, that's a nice thing about in repertoire theater. So we, we, I don't know how many productions we have saved here and we're able to play. There are um, uh, some productions that they, they come from the 60s. So quite old stuff and we have new productions and the good thing is that you can sort of find the right balance here because there are always people they feel way more attracted and, and at home and easy with an older production where yeah where, where they can just they, they will see what they expect and then the other um, half of the audience they they feel bored if they always see the same thing and they want to want to have a new challenge. They want to have new ideas. They want to have a new connection to the opera. It's also the group I belong to. And um, but the good thing is really if you have this um, uh, this balance because because you want to you want to satisfy all the people and you want to keep them still going into opera and opera should 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 maintain a part of their life. And there are really a lot of people. Opera is a very, very, very strong part of their life. That's something I, I also experience after a show when I go to the to the U-Bahn and then there was some someone comes and she knows that, that I'm the opera studio um, man here in, in the in the opera studio. They, they really like to connect. They, 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 they really show you that it's not just one evening thing, it's a really a huge part of their emotional and artistic life going to the opera. So I, I think maybe it's a little bit dated from, from time to time, but people still get a lot of, of emotional impact through, through an opera performance. That is something I can feel here. So speaking about this perception of opera in the community, Maggie, let's start with you because I know that your your relationship to coming here to this opera house was was a very different one, um, and in fact, you were kind of at the, the the front of the scene. Tell me a little bit about how you, yes. how you came here. <laughs> I mean, I I also grew up with music because my parents are both musicians. My dad is playing violin here in the house, so I I am one of these children walking in here and and loving this. But I came back after I did my my A levels after school, mm -hmm. and started working at the concierge desk. So I experienced this exactly what Toby just told you about being in the underground station, having people there telling you about the experience. I was standing there every evening talking to these people coming here all the time. And they just told me about the fascination and about this, this whole experience they have when they enter the opera. It's not only about sitting there and seeing the performance, but coming, walking into the beautiful bars and, and getting the fee feeling of, of everything. And um, I think that perspective is very important for me to understand, like you said, how to sell maybe this this art form because I think it's really about giving people a way of of this experiencing this this whole art form. And then on the other hand, I it was just very um, important for me to also get to know the singers and the artists. So for viewers watching right now who don't necessarily understand the complexities of an operation like this, what is exactly your role here? I'm actually organizing the things um, that the Opera Studio does. So there is this big, big um, education program Toby leads, like artistic wise. And then on the other hand, we have concerts and performances. And there are, I mean, young singers who come from all over the world to Munich and need to settle in and need to find a way to, I mean, communicate in Munich and, and to live here. And that's just what I try to make as easy as possible for them. We're help, helping them with housing, for example, and really settling in and educating them. Um, and then on the other hand, just yeah, getting in touch with the agents, with the organizations from like all the concerts we do and really try to, to communicate with them, which was very difficult in Corona times, of course, because it suddenly stopped. But um, I think just sitting there in the office and the young singers know there is someone there and they can come and, and ask things. Um, there are maybe not only artistic um, like issues because they will ask that, Toby, of course, but other things. I mean, that's just the whole organization thing within the opera student and outside to the agents and to the, to the concerts and stuff. Tobias, let's go back and, and talk a little bit about your musical background because this was also a fascinating trajectory. So you're from Switzerland, you started out as a pianist, yeah. and then you've, you've come all the way here uh, and you've been the director of the, the opera studio. How did you get into music in the first place? 
Yeah, let's say with 13, 14, it really became a, a, a really desire for me to, to play the piano on a very good level. And then really, I, I, you know, this kind of passion you, you have when you're 13, 14, 15, you really have your dreams. And that, that, that um, uh, is how it came. And then quite early, a friend of mine from the school, she decided to become a singer and she was uh, uh, um, yeah, a child of a, of a singer's family. So I came there and I played for her father and for her lessons and for, they, they were really generous people. They had big parties with a lot of singers. And um, you know, I, I was always a quite okay, at least okay, um, sight reader. And I was just, just sitting there and I played for all the, I think that was maybe between 15 and 17. And through that girl, I also went to, 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 to play for voice lessons, really passionately, I have to say. I really liked that. And we went to Hans Hotter and to Sena Jurinath and to Elisabeth Schwarzkopf. They were all really oldies at that time. But I got a, a, real, a real sense for that singer's world, I have to say. It's not, not just about singing, but the, how that works, how these personalities are. Well, what I'm hearing you saying is that this was a natural progression for you. There wasn't necessarily one decisive moment no. where you're working yeah. with a singer, yeah. and you say, okay, that's what I have to Absolutely. do. But this just seemed... Absolutely, very, very, very natural. And then um, uh, since, since Lucerne has the Lucerne Festival, and I was a page turner for 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 um, um, for the concerts. And I, I, I remember, like today, there was a show in the Müllerin with Francisco Araiza and uh, Irving Gage. And then after the concert, I, I asked Irving Gage, "What should I do if I if I, if I want to become a accompanist and, and work with singers?" And then she, she, he just said. Learn proper piano playing, go, go somewhere and really study the piano and then the rest will come from itself. And to a certain degree, um, uh, he was right. So I, I started my um, uh, piano degrees, but from the beginning, from the beginning, I, I, am, uh, parallel, I played in all the voice classes. That, that was so clear for me, that also the piano is for me an instrument to get in touch with, uh, with singers, especially um, uh, songs. Schubert songs. That is also something I'm, I'm coming way more from a concert family. We went a, in a lot of concerts and song recitals and also um, um, plays, not so much opera. And the opera came later because, um, yeah, yeah, it's interesting how, how life sort of, sometimes if, if, if you follow life and you're really quite aware, where are your strengths? And um, sometimes also to accept that maybe your strength or not what you like to have be your strength, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so um, that, that was for me a very natural process. That, that more and more, I, I played a lot of concerts and um, I, I played for competitions that they were all together with singers. So let's, let's actually go back and, and sort of zoom out. For, for people who are not aware, what is the role of a vocal coach who is a pianist? I, I'm trying to, just trying to get a sense of, you know, that's that's a highly active level of involvement. We think of a collaborative pianist. We we think, okay, we've heard this term collaborative pianist. We've heard the term accompanist. We've heard the term uh, vocal coach or or repetiteur. But what what do these things really mean? Because it's not just being the pianist for the singer. It seems like part part collaborative pianist, part uh, feedback giver, part teacher, but you really have to understand their craft. I'm trying to understand yeah. the big picture of what goes into your work. I, I, I think there, there is in fact a big difference between being a collaborative pianist and, and a coach. And I think, it's also from my own experience, you should keep that a little bit separate from each other. Because I think as soon you have to um, uh, go on a stage and perform as, a, as, as, as an artist together with a singer, I think you should not be in the position to always give feedback and, and this kind of stuff, because it's a real collaboration. Um, a vocal coach or a corepetitor is, is, is a slightly different thing, because let's, let's say the basics or the, the, the singer is singing and you, you just observe intonation, you observe rhythm, you observe um, uh, clarity of the articulation. I, I think that that's the most important and, 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 and all the dynamics. And then every coach has, has different, let's say, supplementaries. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. they are coaches. I think, I, I, I think I'm one of these um, guys with a very good ear or instinct for vocal stuff for really sound production stuff that 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 even if i'm not a singer that that i can at least point out where are the crucial spots where you have to pay attention why do i think that high note does not really resonate 
you know, this kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's not a voice lesson, but it's, it's sort of a vocal observation. Mm -hmm. That is w w what is, let's say, a little bit my strength. And um, other people, they go really deeply into interpretation. Other people, let, let's say, the main thing is, is really connect with style. So, so I think on that fundament, every coach has, has a different strength. So let's talk about what it means to train a singer, an opera singer these days. We've referenced several times now the Opera Studio. What is this program? How was it founded? And um, what does that really feel like to participate in the shaping of these young musicians' lives? This is absolutely exciting for me. Yeah. I really think, well, Maggie can, can start with that because I, we have to point that out, that the work she does, the organization work, to care about the daily life of all the young singers that come here and it's the first time that they left home or, or they don't know the language and that the whole mentality is different. So that is a really very, very, um, uh, yeah, a very important job in order to bring them really down so that they can start to concentrate on singing, on learning, on, on performing. So that's why first I give the <laughs> well, <laughs> let, to me. Let's start out with, with this question. There's this program. How old are these, these students? I mean, it depends. You can actually applicate um, until you're 30. I think that's a little too old. Um, we always, like, I mean, it's, it's better to be I think 28 is now the oldest. Um, but some of them are eight, like, no, 22, I think, is very young. Mm -hmm. um, so what was, I mean, what, who was the youngest ever? Do you remember? Youngest ever, I think 21. 21, yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. and that's very young, I think. Yeah, but really uh, it, yeah. it, it is really young. But, I mean, it can work. We, we have um, one singer, and I think they can grow so much. Um, so it's, it's possible. Um, they're here for two years. I think that's the first um, important thing to understand. And what Toby does, what we do, is we listen to every single <laughs> application that comes in, like 900 or mm. something. Toby oh, listens to yeah. every single one of it. And I think for me, that's when the process really starts, like the observation, who could fit in. And um, yeah, then we try to figure out who should sing for us. And, and we have this audition pro process and then really straight after this audition, we actually start contacting them, giving them the main details about what will what they can accept from us in Munich. And then we start organizing everything. So the like I said, the main question is always where can I live? How can I come and what do I do? And can you help us? So we do that. Um, and then we, we try to um, arrange everything for their first week. So we sit down together with them, talk them through, tell them, you have coachings, you have concerts, you have this and that. So really, I think, give them a secure space and, and to give them a structure. I think that's very important. Like my work, get really structuring them because they're a little lost when they start here. So I'm very curious about how you go about selecting which students will be benefiting most from this program. And when you choose a singer, does it necessarily have to be the person who's strongest? Or can it be perhaps the person you detect will have the most potential? And how, how can you detect something like that? It's in fact uh, a mixture. It's a mixture of that. So if, if you have the feeling or if I have the feeling that someone is very good, maybe not outstanding, but very good, but I get the feeling that sort of, sometimes I say the, the the cake is baked, you know, <laughs> that is what this person can offer um, uh, vocally or artistically or as a personality. Mm -hmm. If I get the feeling she or he is now done and ready to go and try their best in the, in the musical world, in a, in a, in a theater or, or as a concert singer or whatever, then I'm, I think there's no place for such kind of people here in the opera studio because it's all, and I strongly believe in that, it's, it's all about development. If someone comes and, and really thinks, um, um, oh, that's my first job and I have a job at the Bayerische Staatsoper, that's just the wrong, the wrong, um, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's the wrong idea about what the opera studio is. For sure, we take um, um, at least the people we really strongly believe in and we really strongly think they can in the best cases, make an international career or at least a really nice life as a singer um, uh, on, on another level. You know, that, that, that there are so many possibilities. And, um, uh, but this, this feeling that there's, there's something not 100% developed and maybe we can bring that really out here. That, that's, that's a little bit the, how yeah. we're looking for. And see them as a group, I think. Always have in mind who is already here, 
like to to really add something into the group because no. they do their own production and bring that on stage so they're a team and, and have to sing together mm. so. i'm so curious about what you feel are the expectations and the aspirations of these young performers coming in are they how do they envision their musical lives i think i think that every young singer who comes here has the biggest dream you know, the biggest dream they, 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 in, in, in their vision they will maybe start on a very very good opera house here and then eventually as soon as possible will have a freelance career as an international singer. That I, I, I really think that, that's for ev that, that is for everyone here in the studio. And I think you need that. You really need that very clear will and this ambition and yeah, and, and this, this, this dream, because otherwise you, you, you will not sort of mobilize so much energy to put in, 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 in your singing, in your artistry. I, I think um, you need that strong vision. And the vision normally is, I will sing at the Metropolitan Opera or here in Munich or in London Covent Garden or at La Scala. That, that is um, what the people are dreaming about. And I think um, more and more, and maybe not in the time here, but more and more um, life will show you where, where you go. Life will show you, you know, but it's not all just about singing. You know, you know that we, we all know that life also starts to interfere. And that's why sometimes I think it's very important that the people here, you know, they have another two years to really invest in themselves. It's a pure investment in themselves as a personality, as an artist, as a singer, as a performer. And because after this, life starts to take over. You, if you're successful, you have job after job after job. There's not so much time, you know, if, if, you, if you don't have a lot of energy, um, uh, there's not so much time to practice and to, to do this stuff. You really just have to go and function. Also, if you go in a middle German house, that is, that is what, what comes next. Then, uh, you know, that then there's, yeah, there's life. Maybe you want to um, have a family, you know, all, all this kind of stuff. Maybe you, maybe you get sick. Maybe, you know, there are so many things life can bring to you. And that should all happen while you're performing, while you're singing. So it's, it's a really, really, it, it's a hard business. And sometimes I think it's, it's really good that in the younger years, people don't exactly know that. They don't expect that. And that's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> I'm really fascinated by what I'm hearing about what perhaps remains the same in a musical upbringing, what, what changes with the world. When you have some of the legendary singers come back through and observe what you're doing with the program, do you ever hear from them that the operatic or musical world is now different from what they knew when they were that age? Or are the the basic ingredients of, of the foundation of training, are they, is that really essentially the same? I think essentially it's the same. And it's interesting, you know, for sure, I, I choose the people that come here and do master classes and maybe then they already a little bit in, in my direction, what they, what they think is really important in singing. So it's Brigitte Fassbender or Anna Tomova Sintov. So the really experienced international singers I really adore, not just from the vocal, also from the artistic um, um, point of view. And what these ladies and um, also, also some men really show is that that um, singing and performing is a lifelong work. It's a lifelong um, um, development. And if you if, if the fire in yourself for that job or for the singing or for for the music does not really really burn, I don't know if you're really able to to follow that constant work on yourself. I think with an instrument, it's, it's, it's somehow the same. The singer um, uh, has to adjust also what the body does, you know? So the older you get, the body also um, 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 change, is changing. And maybe the baby, you always have to adjust a little bit. And, um, uh, but I think that's the main thing, that it's a constant work. And it, it does not, you, you finish the opera studio, and then you start to, to work and to have a life. I, I think that is in fact, I, I, I think, if, if, if you choose that, that, that profession, you cannot have that that's the profession and, and that, that's my free time. Okay. Somehow it's part of your normal life and it should be, I strongly believe in that. What about, okay, so we're, we're, here, in the, we're, we're, we're here in the Opera House and I'm, I'm trying to get a sense of how, how well-rounded a, a musician or a singer has to be. There's, um, okay, there's the distinction between opera and let's say roughly art song and recital singers. Mm -hmm. 
Should they have to be able to do both? I'm thinking, for example, of Dietrich fischer dieskau who was at home in, in both places. Mm -hmm. should, should the training of a singer really encompass both? That's one of my absolute favorite topics, and I'm really happy that you, that, that you bring it to that point. I strongly believe in this. I strongly believe, and that I'm really, that that's for me a very important thing, that a singer should be a musician and an artist. A singer is not just a strange animal what produces sound. At least the singers I really adore. And um, that's also why, why should you just um, uh, only um, uh, sing opera? Why you should know, you can sing songs or concert work with exactly the same voice, just, just, just technically spoken. For sure, some people feel more attracted to that and other people don't have a real relationship to, to, to the other kind. But here we really try, you know, it's an opera studio, but I really try to give um, uh, quite enough space for song because that's where I come from, and also for concert work. We have also a so-called Passionsconcert. It's in, in the Eastern time where we do um, oratorios. And I'm also quite connected to, to, to some, some uh, conductors around uh, Munich. So, so that that's, if people have that talent, that they can sing their Bach or their Heidenschöpfung or their Dvorak Stabat or the Briten War Requiem. That is for me, should be an essential part. And I try to follow that. I, I really try to force all the singers here next to the opera repertoire come to me and we do the full Verdi Requiem or whatever. Because for me, we want to form musicians and artists and not just only singers in, 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 in that form that, yeah, he has a beautiful voice or she has a, a very nice top. I, I really think I just want to point out that again, because you said it. Great singers from the past, let's say the, 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 the Mitchin Disco or, or um, uh, Schwarzkopf or Seyfried or all these guys, they were always, uh, Brigitte Fassbender, completely 50-50. Um, uh, and then when they got a little older, then the, the song took more time than, than, than the opera. And, um, uh, you know, also if, 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 you, um, um, if you say people like Leontin Price, no? That one of the greatest singers um, uh, from, from the last century. She performed a lot of Barber songs. He, he, he wrote for her. I have a collection of Wolf songs, also Regine Crispin. You know, this is all stuff. In these days, I don't know why people tend to start to specialize. And I, I think that's, that's, that's really not necessary. That, that's, that's not how it should be. Well, what happens if a singer with a lot of potential, a great instrument, comes to you and says, well, yes, I would like to work in this program, but I'm, I, I really think my strength is in opera, but art song, I, I really can't do that, or, or the other way around. How do you address a concern like that? You know that there is, in fact, and uh, there are so many art songs, it's a huge repertoire. And maybe if someone is completely connected to opera, for sure I would not give, give her uh, mignon songs from Schubert. But, but there, there are enough songs you can approach with a quite operatic approach. Let's say if you go um, uh, for, for, for Schumann, the kernel leader, for, for a tenor or for a baritone, it, 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 it's, it's bigger singing. It's bigger singing than, 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 than some of the really um, uh, sm smaller songs. Um, Strauss songs. They're, they're really they're asking for an opera, operatic approach. Mm -hmm. you know? this is really, Strauss wrote most of them um, uh, for, for, for his wife, or maybe he was an opera conductor. He did, 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 did it's operatic, operatic music. I think if someone has a very good understanding of the text, um, also Mahler songs, they're asking for, for a little bit more of, of a sound so that opera singers, they don't feel the need to sort of uh, get tight or I have to sing piano. That's, that's really not, not the thing. But I think I try to encourage people to really use their full potential of their voice also in songs. And I think, you know, a really, really nice light soprano will sing Nachts und Träume different than a middle side <laughs> lyric soprano. And you know, if um, uh, Nina Stemme would say, I adore this song, I will do it, she would do it with her, with her voice. And no one really says what is appropriate. I think appropriate should be how you understand the words, how you phrase, how, how, how you understand the style, how you understand the intimacy of, of, of such, such, a, such a little little art form. So now we have this, this, okay, we're looking at the program. It's two years, and I'm trying to get a sense of how intense these two years are. It might sound like a lot of time to some people, but musically speaking, uh, it, that really must take constant work to create a trajectory of, of real, 
growth. Now, I know that you've been doing this for a while, but does it ever surprise you at what people can achieve during this short amount of time? Yeah, sometimes I, I have to say I, I don't have so many bad surprises, <laughs> but um, um, sometimes we have good surprises, you know, that, 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 um, um, that somehow the, the atmosphere here and how, how, how the people are getting support and the information and their own experience on the stage, that they sort of really set something free in them, really awakens something um, uh, we never would have expected that. That, that, that happened um, from time to time, I have to say. And then are also sometimes, and I think there are, let's say, bad surprises, that during these two years, the singer itself, or also we, think that it, 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 it's too much for them. It's too much for them. They, they realize that that profession takes so much. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say sacrifice, but so much. You really, it's what I said before. If the fire is not really on, sometimes it's better to, to, to take these two years here with the result, I gave it a chance, I liked it, I became a better musician, a better singer, but that is not the main job I can do, I, I want to do in my life. That also happened quite rarely, but, but um, sometimes. Yeah, I think they really get to know the truth during the two years here. They, they know themselves better after the two years and also know what might happen in the future because it's like the realistic truth that this can show in these two years. And I, what I was so surprised about is that it's really about pure discipline all the time. I mean, really, you have to be disciplined. And whenever you lose this this way of, okay, I need to focus, um, you will probably get, get in trouble. And then there is Toby who can help you with that, but it, you really have to, yeah, stay stay focused on that for the two years because then you can take the full full experience with, with you and otherwise, I don't think it's, it's the best way. So that's what they realize at the end, probably. So what are the expectations of these performers, professionally speaking, after they might graduate? Is there already an expectation that they're already so involved with their performance opportunities that it's, it already has its own momentum? One of the, the common questions that I hear from a general public is, does a performer have to succeed by a certain age, and is that different? necessarily for singers? I think for singers, it, um, um, there are always exceptions for sure. And it's not the younger is the better. But um, uh, it depends also from, from, from which kind of fach you're singing. You know, if you're a really light soprano, you're on a stage, you stand for young girls. You can do Enchin or you can do Adele in the German repertoire, you go for Oscar or the whatever. So all the roles are just from the story, very connected to youth. That does not mean that if you start to sing these roles with 28 that you're too old, that absolutely not. But I think you should not lose time, for sure. Because if, you, if you're not lucky and your voice sort of starts to grow with you in a slightly bigger fach, if you can do what Lucia Pop did from Susanna to Contessa in Figaro, or from Sophie in Rosenkavalier to a Marshall in, that is really nice if, if, the, if the voice sort of um, um, allows you to sing the bigger repertoire, what normally stands for like, uh, mid-aged people, you know? No one is expecting that like, a Tosca is 22. Uh, as, as a vocal coach, there's a lot in there that is psychologically supportive of all these challenges that they're, they're navigating. How do you really look after their sense of well-being when their expectations are already a lot of pressure they're just trying to navigate things from from performances to studying the music what what can you do to advise them to be well not just on stage but just generally in life i th i think it's an, an, a very important thing that you um try to leave and that's really that's why i say try it it's quite difficult try to leave stuff from your personal life out of the, let's say, practicing room, out of the theater, out of the stage, out of the rehearsal with the conductor. And um, because it, it, it's so, so difficult, because it all will touch your voice, for sure. If you have the baddest time in your life, you know, it's quite, it, it, it's quite difficult to really get that positive energy, what is completely, diff uh, completely um, uh, important essential for good singing. 
So that is something I, I try to 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 um, um, guide them a little bit in this direction. For sure, I have an open ear if something <laughs> is really going a hundred percent wrong. But I try to show them quite clear. It's okay, but try to um, uh, leave that out of your of your working zone. That that is is uh, or or try to get help outside of the of the um, um, of, of of your of your working environment. I think it's also about really about trust because they trust us and you uh, artistically or or with with problems in life, whatever might come. So they know. They have to focus and and like be there in the artistic room. But then on the other hand, of course, they can call us whenever there's something. I mean, we had broken legs. We had I mean, we had a lot of <laughs> accidents and stuff yeah. going on. Um, and they really I think they know that they can talk to us um, whenever they like to. And especially during Corona, I think it was important to show them that we're all, I don't know, um, sitting in the same boat. So let's say I came to you as a young singer, 20 something. And you had accepted me into the program, and you know you told me that I was talented, and I know that I want a performing career as a singer, but I told you that I have a hard time with the stage. Is it by that time already too late? I don't know one artist who really goes easy peasy on a stage. It would also be a little bit strange, you know. So, so you go 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 on a stage. There's a lot of people. You share with them a real um, a real message. It's not just about, about um, hitting the right notes to the right uh, at the right time, you know. So, so, so I think it's a very personal experience. So that you're a little bit nervous. In the best cases, a positive nervousness, like a horse before a race. And, but also other people, and I, I have to include myself, and I was were younger. Um, sometimes also with really negative, um, uh, you know, that, that you that you were just not able to 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 show what what you think you can. And um, that is something everyone is different. Also in the opera studio, and I just I think for sure my my, my old teacher always said it all depends by preparation. You can oh, yeah, get, we you hear can this get, all the time. Yeah. We, we all heard that. Yeah, everything's and I fine thought, if you've prepared well. I really did my best, but sorry, it did not really work. So, um, um, but I think to do it again and again and again, I think that is is something very important. And the good thing is here, if it, it's not Corona, people are really quite busy. They have um, uh, small mm -hmm. roles on the stage. They have a lot of concerts. There are some sponsor concerts. There are open master classes. You know, they, they, they're in a constantly performing mode. And the good thing is that if you have a lot um, um, to do, even if even if you fail, let's, let's call fail or something happens, you don't have to stick with that experience. The next is coming, and then the next is coming, and then the next is coming. You you don't get stuck with the bad experiences. So we've clearly all had to adapt to the coronavirus situation. What I'm thinking of with a two-year program, how, how does one continue the work fully um, when the performance opportunities are heavily altered, uh, limited? How do you simulate the same benefit that you get during normal times? Yeah. I think even more education because we had even yeah. more master classes. Yeah. Yeah. We had even more um, auditions because we are here at the Opera House. Everyone get tested regularly. We are really, really. I mean, we are in very good hands here. So we have this secure space. We we have like the possibility to invite people and be in a secure space where they can be educated even more. And then, like we said, do the concerts in a small group of people, but never. I mean, always give them the chance to still perform and to, to be teached. And I think that was just the main part, even more education. And then we did online concerts, we did small things, we did open air things. So they had the chances to show people what, what they can do. And I think that's just what made it so important for them. There are these small possibilities, even though, and there is an outcome because um, yeah, we did focus even more on these things. But what about the students? Uh, how have they adapted to this? Are they still into it with with all these technological <laughs> uh, but, but, but <laughs> changes? I, I really have to say, um, um, uh, you know, in all in every crisis, you can find something positive, and I'm, I'm a very op optimistic person, so that's a little bit my my way to see it. So I think we all learned a little bit something. So um, all the online stuff, digital mm. um, uh, approaches, really became part of my life, and it was not before. You, 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 you can imagine also auditions online, this kind of stuff. And also the young singers, they started to really get used how to yeah. deal in front of a camera. 
Um, uh, w w what really looks good? Which kind of makeup is, is mm. important? Uh, what which dress? dress? All this kind of stuff. And I think because even after Corona, that will stay, I yeah. think, a more prominent part of um, our life in, yeah. in, 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 in the arts and in opera. Um, so it's really good that also the, the, the young singers, they, they, they sort of are getting easier with, with, with the whole thing. Because the first um, online audition we had, then people are said, it's so strange just to sing into a machine or whatever. But you know, you get now used to normal. that and now, now it's quite normal. And I'm not really sure if also next year or whenever um, someone would have had an audition in New York. Maybe you just do it online. Online. You don't have to take a plane and, and go there and at least a first, a first um, thing. For sure, um, you need then sort of a personal, uh, a personal feeling also for, for the artist you're hiring. But, um, um, but for a first clear idea about the person, I think online can mm. work and should work. Yeah. That, so that, that they really learned. And, you know, because you also um, always say the young singers, that they are in fact really young singers. And I think that experience on a stage or in front of a concert audience is a really essential part in that stadium of singing. But if you don't have it, you don't have it. What, what, you, you cannot change it in Corona days. So we just, um, our, it just all got a little bit more scholastic. Mm -hmm. And in that age, I have to say, a, lo a lot of singers, they really profited. Because they had more time to really um, think about their voice, to practice, to discover stuff. Because if, if you constantly have to learn and to go on stage, you know, you, you have somehow to deal with what you have. And sometimes you, you continue singing in a way what just gives you security, but the next step would, 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 would mean more free. And um, that's something you, you can maybe figure out better if you, if you have a little time to, to sort of, yeah, to optimize all, 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 the, all the things you already can do. So I, I really think everyone became a, really a better singer. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is, um, um, this is just a little story, but it was in the middle of the, of the Corona days. I was under the shower in the morning. I thought, <laughs> I'm quite connected to a lot of casting people. <laughs> and for sure, they are totally bored because nothing's <laughs> worked. I would just call them yeah. and see, three or four of them, they came here and we really had a good support also from our boss, from, from, from our general manager, um, that we can do stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 they had to make a test, they came here. We had, um, yeah, we had at least four really good auditions with the result that all the people they finish now the second year, they have a job. Yeah. So I, I just want to say yes, Corona is, 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 it's a bad situation. It's just how it is. But I, I think we always, everyone should try to do the best out of that, um, um, out of that situation. And at least concerning studio, I think, I think we succeeded to do the best. Yeah. And while well, focusing on the other things, they, the singers had the chance to even concentrate more on themselves, I think, and, and to, yeah, like you said, get better. So they are really good because, yeah, yeah. I mean, some people were even surprised, like, wow, that level after this year of Corona, it's it's amazing. And um, yeah, I think that gave us a little bit the time to focus on these things. And so finally, I'm so curious to know if we can characterize the human voice as being the most personal instrument it's literally carried within ourselves. How can you ensure that this individuality is fostered and that the students, after they've graduated beyond your program, how they can continue to find artistic growth. Is that something that's up to you or is that really up to them? At the end of the day, all is up to them. But, but um, I think for sure um, what they feel here under my, my guidance is that, yes, for sure, you have to, you have the voice you have. And that voice is, in fact, always personal. And I think the main thing is that you, you can control your voice. You either have a solid technique that you can sing low and high and fast and slow and soft and loud and staccato and legato, let's say like this. That is for me, or the basics, and with a good intonation, the basics of, of, um, um, uh, of, 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 of technique. All what I think makes a singer interesting personal individual has something to do what you do with your voice, how you connect with the text. If you really have that urgent need to, 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 to 
tell a story, to connect with the people. And also not just listen, oh, Mirella Fini did a nice mimi, I just, just try to copy it. That, that's not the thing, that you really try to start to trust yourself and trust your instinct and trust your knowledge about the words and create your own world with your own singing. And I think for me that's the most important. And I hope that in the two years they get that message so often <laughs> that at the end of the day they, 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 they think it's, it, it's all about what, how I express myself, my own feelings through that text, my own, my, my own yeah, relationship to these words, to this role. And that, that you really start to, to trust yourself. As soon you really connect with yourself, it's enough. Be be because then it's really individual. As long you, you you always try to think, oh, she did it like this, or he did it like this, and oh, and, and um, she has a better high notes and whatever. For for me, that that's not that's not the, the that's not the way where you really start to develop artistry. There's, I mean, even if um, young singers who have been members of the opera studio come back and and have their roles here, they still call Toby and and ask for advice, like, oh, can we do one little coaching between my performances because I have something, and I think that really shows that. This education they have is such a big impact that even though they make their careers and, and have their own singing life and found their way of singing, they still will rely on the people we work with and especially Toby who, who teaches them. Because I think this trust they gain in these two years and there is a person who just wants to support you and really educate you and like, yeah, being able to show the best I think that's just what sticks with them forever. So I think even in 10 years, someone <laughs> comes and Toby's sitting here, they will say, Toby, <laughs> can we just talk about this or that? Yeah, so yeah. that's really nice about the Opera Studio. Maggie and Tobias, thank you so much for being here on the show. It's been it an absolute pleasure. delight. And we wish you continued success, not just in transitioning out of this pandemic, but in all of the future uh, endeavors and all of the lives that you touch. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>